Now, I'm really delighted to share with you remarks from <clears throat> attorney Edward B. Myers. Uh, Mr. Myers, who has represented government trade associations and private clients in regulatory matters over 40 years, was the lead attorney for Environmental Health Trust on this case. And in 2018, working with the Natural Resources Defense Council, they successfully challenged the FCC with respect to the need for environmental review of 5G cell towers and transmitters. In this case, Mr. Myers represented us and uh, the other plaintiffs, Cindy Franklin and Elizabeth Barris, to appeal the FCC decision that they issued, which was not to revise the safety standards. Mr. Myers uh, will speak to us this morning from a recorded interview explaining the nuts of the case and the finding that the FCC failed to comply with legal requirements to review submitted evidence. This case involves an FCC order that was issued in 2019 in which the FCC terminated a proceeding that had begun several years earlier, actually in 2013, uh, in which the FCC considered whether to re-examine and <clears throat> start a new rulemaking to update its safety regulations for the limits on radio frequency radiation from cell phones and cell phone facilities. Uh, the commission, I should say, terminated that proceeding without taking any action, thereby perpetuating the 1996 limits on radio frequency radiation. Notwithstanding over a thousand documents in the record challenging the safety and environmental impact of those regulations. In considering our appeal, the court granted our petition for review because contrary to the requirements of the Administrative Procedure Act, the FCC had failed to provide a reasoned explanation for its determination to terminate the proceeding below. The court found, among other things, that the FCC had improperly relied on conclusory statements from a sister agency, the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, even though there was no indication that the FDA itself had looked at the evidence of significant harm from radio frequency radiation. The court decided to send the case back to the FCC with a direction to provide a reasoned explanation for its decision. In particular, the court directed the FCC to explain why it decided to retain its cell phone testing procedures to address the impacts of radio frequency radiation on children and the health implications of long-term exposure to radio frequency radiation and how the regulations apply today given the ubiquity of wireless devices relative to when uh, the 1996 regulations were put into place. Uh, what is a remand? A remand simply means that the court has decided to send the case back to the FCC mm -hmm. so that the FCC can re-examine what it has done and try again to come up with an order based on the evidence in the record. It will have to provide a reasonable explanation for whatever decisions it makes. Now, how it orchestrates that it remains to be seen the the agency the fcc has a lot of flexibility in how it's going to proceed it may establish a brand new docket it may reopen the old docket in, e in either case it will in all likelihood be required to issue a public notice that will be published in the federal register alerting the public to the fact that there's a new opportunity to present evidence. It might be argued that it doesn't need to add new evidence to the record, that it, there's sufficient evidence already. But given the time that has passed since the record was compiled, beginning in 2013, and the fact that the Biden administration is, is now in power, whereas 
uh, it was not in power when the decision was, was issued. It would not surprise me if the FCC reopens the record in order to give the public a chance to submit updated evidence. I'm not insisting that that necessarily will happen, but I think it's very likely. So interested persons should keep an eye on the Federal Register for a notice from the FCC indicating exactly how it intends to proceed and whether an opportunity to submit new evidence is going to be provided and what the deadline will be for the submission of the new evidence. The court clearly felt that the FCC's claim that the margin of safety ensured that there'd be no problem with exposure to radio frequency radiation was, was not sufficient, was not reasonable, really. Right. It has nothing to do with showing that the existing limits are reasonable. And more is required of the agency than just that kind of argument. So to the extent the agency makes that kind of argument in some pending matter, I think there is a basis for challenging the agency. I see. I know they gave a lot of deference to the FDA, but even, but even with all of that, they still concluded it was arbitrary and capricious for the non-cancer effects, which the, the, the FCC never even talked about. I mean, it's, they didn't even discuss they didn't even list them or address why, much less birds, bees, trees. It was, not, it was nothing. Well, yeah, on that latter point, I think it is interesting that the fact that the FCC did not even address the environmental issues means that on the remand, the FCC is going to have to address the environmental issue. On the other hand, that doesn't mean that the FCC has to conduct an environmental impact statement or an environmental assessment under the National Environmental Policy Act. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see just to what extent the FCC addresses environmental issues and, ha and how it addresses environmental issues. Uh, a full environmental impact statement is a big undertaking. Mm -hmm. and, I suspect the agency will feel it is under no obligation to do that given the court's decision, but it is obliged to address environmental effects. So it'll be interesting to see how they do that and whether it's sufficient uh, uh, to meet the court's standards. Yeah, we, um, we did a FOIA uh, federal freedom of information request to the FCC that found there was discussion about an environmental review, but there was never, we were actually not given the documents, but rather documents were redacted related to the issue of environmental review. Should there be an environmental review for 5G? I know that there was so much research on the record on trees, plants, uh, impacts to insects, impacts to bees. So um, I found it, shocking when I first learned about this, that actually the limits were never set to protect animals or wildlife. And yet with all the 5G cell towers, if you have several in a neighborhood, dozens, you're going to have the, the birds, bees, and trees to be closer than people. Mm -hmm. And yet we don't even have limits that even considered how would this affect them. And we mm -hmm. know that the levels can be hundreds mm -hmm. of times more near the antennas. It's not What's even more than the FCC limits, non-compliant. Well, it's clear that on the remand, they, they are going to have to look at the environmental effects. I don't want to say environmental impacts because that sounds too much like NEPA, but it may come down to the same thing. Well, thank you very much for joining us and for your incredible work on this case. I cannot thank you enough. Oh, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. <laughs>